Now I get the privilege of introducing somebody else to you that, that many of you know him already. Um, he gets to do something a little bit different today than what he usually does for Harvest. Um, but we're in a teaching series. So we're actually in week three of a series we call Rugged that's walking through the Old Testament book of Malachi. Um, last week, we kind of paused in the series. We celebrated five years together, um, baptizing people in this place. Let, yeah, you can applaud for that. It was, if you missed it, I'm sorry um, that you missed it, but it was a celebration together in this time. Um, we're kicking back into the series where we left off uh, in Malachi. Um, the first week, we really set the foundation of God's love, that if we want to have a God-shaped uh, life, we have to lean into a God-shaped love. Um, and then in, in week two, we kind of continued the story of Malachi. Week three, though, uh, I'm excited to introduce to you Joel Lopez. Um, Joel is our worship pastor. Come on out here, man. And uh, very often, more often than not, behind the scenes. But I'm excited to have him share with us where we left off in week three. And uh, Looking forward to just what God has. And I'll just say one extra thing. In the first couple of weeks, thinking about this series and the heart that God pulls from us, um, Joel, you you lead uh, and you live in those ways. And so I'm excited just for the authenticity that you can bring to God's word. In this passage, it's a challenging one. Yeah. Uh, and I know it's, it's a bit of a wrestle, so you're welcome for giving you the hard yeah. one. All right, take it away, man. <laughs> well, thank you, Pastor Micah. It's an honor to be here and a privilege. I can't see anybody. I don't know if you could raise the house lights a little bit. Yeah. It's a privilege to be able to share God's word this morning. Well, and how amazing. Five years, guys. That's amazing. Five years harvest. And my wife and I have been serving here for, we actually moved when the church was about six months old. And so it's been amazing to see what God has done, even in the midst of so many challenges in our world. And um, I, I just encourage you, if you're just on the sidelines and trying to figure out if you want to get plugged in and... I just encourage you, you do want to get plugged in. We have some of the friendliest people in our church, so I encourage you, get involved in a community group, get involved on a serving team. God is doing great things, and, and now is the time to get involved and be a part of what God is doing through his church, and um, this is the first time I actually preach, guys. First time. I've, I've, I've spoken <laughs> I've spoken before uh, in, you know, different uh, breakout sessions and stuff like that, but I told Micah, Micah, I don't know if I could stand up there and, and talk more than 15 minutes. I, I, I don't know. People are going to be looking at me weird, but I've prepared, and so um, here we are today. I um, uh, uh, just want to share a little bit about myself um, in addition to serving here as a worship pastor, which, by the way, I got to give a shout out to the worship team and to the production team. <laughs> These guys are amazing, and it's a privilege to serve them, and... and um, and yeah, so I, I usually lead from the back, and God is taking me out of my comfort zone in this season. And I remember praying once. Sometimes I joke around when I host, and I say, well, God didn't give me the gift of voice uh, because I can't sing a note. And normally, most, most worship pastors are, are, are the singers, are the ones that sing. That's the, that's the normal thing. And I remember praying once and, and, and telling God, God, why didn't you give me the gift of voice? And he said, well, I'm going to use you to be a leader of leaders. And so because of that, I've been able to work with uh, all types of talent all over the world, and one of the ministries the Lord has given me is a ministry called Unified Sound, and, um, and Unified Sound really is a collective of worship leaders and, 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 and musicians worldwide, just really excellent musicians, and we've kind of taken these worship songs that we sing, and we've kind of created this, this fusion where we kind of added some Latin elements and and gospel elements, and it really is a fuse of what I believe heaven is going to look like, and so um, actually sound like. A lot of people like to talk about what heaven is going to look like, but I like to look at it from the perspective of what heaven is going to sound like. And in fact, uh, this past January, we recorded a live record here. This place was full, and I want to give you a quick preview because our record comes out in November just to show you a little bit about Unify Sound, just to give you some context and what God is doing through there. Check this video out. There's something about the Latin music being live too, you know? Absolutely. It's like, it's just, I mean, anything being live, and there's the live. No, the Latin music live is different. Yeah. We began this journey three years ago and was started really just as an idea. Me calling my brothers and saying, hey, let's do this fun rendition of of a worship song. Let's do what we do musically. Let's fuse it with salsa and gospel and all these elements has now really turned in, into a movement, an assignment. Bring hope to people, bring joy to people. I believe music has that power. I believe worship has that power. I like to really 
think about what heaven's gonna sound like. And that's really what unified sound is. Who have, who have labored uh, in this effort. We thank you so much for Joel and his leadership. Father, continue to use him, continue to bless him, continue to guide him and direct him. In the name of your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Amen. There you go, guys. Unify Sound. Uh, if, if you don't mind sharing what God is doing through Unify Sound, but our new record comes out, a live record, this November, and I share a little bit about uh, the opportunities God has, has allowed me to lead. The greatest hat I get to wear is that I get to be the husband to my beautiful wife, Gloria, and the father to my three amazing boys. There's a picture up there, I think, of the family. There you go. That's Ezra. Right there, the oldest, Isaiah and Nazareth, and um, it's truly, I mean, that's, that's the biggest privilege I have. There's nothing that compares to that. And so uh, today we're going to dive in, as, as Micah said, Malachi, um, and yeah, by the way, thank you, Micah. Um, <laughs> out, of all, out of all passages, he gave me this one because Malachi is actually addressing the priests. He's, he's addressing the leaders, and he's just uh, rep- pretty much reprimanding them, and he's going in. And so let's dive in. Let's read this passage together. I believe it's going to be there on the screen. You guys ready? All right. Starts in Malachi. He says this. And now, you priests, this warning is for you. If you do not listen and if you do not resolve to honor my name, says the Lord Almighty, I will send a curse on you and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have already cursed them because you have not resolved to honor me. Because of you, I will rebuke your descendants. I will smear on your faces the dung from your festival sacrifices, and you will be carried off with it. If you don't know what dung is, just go look that up, but it's, it's pretty nasty. And you will know that I have sent you this warning so that my covenant with Levi may continue, says the Lord Almighty. And who is Levi? Levi is, um, is the tribe. Is the tribe of Levi was one of the 12 tribes of Israel. And um, they were given the special responsibility to, um, they were pretty much the caretakers of, of, of the temple. And so they were, they had a big responsibility. And so he says this, my covenant was with him, a covenant of life and peace, and I gave them to him. This called for reverence, and he, and he re- revered me and stood in awe of my name. True instruction was in his mouth, and nothing false was found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and uprighteousness and turned many from sin. That was Levi. For the lips of a priest ought to preserve knowledge because he is the messenger of the Lord Almighty and people seek instruction from his mouth. But you have turned from the way and by your teaching have caused many to stumble. (laughs) You have violated the covenant with Levi, says the Lord Almighty. So I have cursed you to be despised and humiliated. Before all the people, because you have not followed my ways, but have shown partiality in the matters of law. And the truth is that the conviction I felt <laughs> when Micah sent me this passage was, was pretty big. Um, uh, the, the passage really rocked, rocked my world. I felt this urgency, um, and I started to immediately reflect about, about my leadership, some of the things that I shared with you today. Um, and the truth is, beyond the ministry here and beyond you know, unify sound, I started to ref- reflect as, um, as my role as a father and as a, as, a, as, a, as a son, as a co-worker, and I started to feel just this urgency. And so as I began to study the passage, um, the Lord revealed five problems that we're going to learn about today. But in addition to that, <clears throat> uh, I said, God, okay, I see the problems. I, I, I see what the issue is here, but what are you calling us to? And so I believe there's five problems and there's five calls that God is calling us to through this passage, but it doesn't stop there because when we choose to live a life for God, uh, there's always a promise. So today we're going to see five problems, five calls, 
and five promises. You guys ready? Problem number one. The first problem we see in this passage is that there's a lack of loyalty for God's word. Malachi said this, and now you priests, this warning is for you. If you do not listen and if you do not resolve to honor my name, says the Lord Almighty, I will send a curse on you and I will curse your blessing. Lack of loyalty for God's name. You see, the priests were not giving God the reverence and respect he deserved. They have lost all loyalty to the Holy One. And it's crazy to think that sounds like our world today, our world has shifted. We've lost focus. There's a whole generation that has lost focus. And now it's all about instant gratification. It's all about becoming a social media influencer. And the truth is, is that our morals have shifted as a society. And so our world has become wicked. And, it, and, I, and I get it. The pressures of this world are hard. Um, I, 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 I sometimes feel the stronghold. But if I was to narrow this down to one thing, the issue here that I believe is that we have stopped being in love with Jesus Wickedness is increasing, but our love for God has decreased. In fact, Jesus says it like this. He says, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. So what is the call? What is God calling us to I believe the call is this. God is calling us to love God. That's the call for this problem. Love God. In fact, that's the first commandment that God says. He says this. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. It's about developing a sense of intimacy and closeness with God. Getting to know him. Just as you would spend time with someone you love. For all of our young people, right? Some of you are falling in love. I see some of you guys building great relationships here. And uh, just as you would spend time getting to know that person, that's the same way it is. It involves getting to know about Jesus and getting yourself involved in the word through worship. And this is what God promises. This is the promise when we choose to love and live for God. It's in Psalms. It's right here in the scripture. It says this, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. What a beautiful promise. God is calling us to fall in love with Jesus. The second problem that we see in this passage is that there's a lack of integrity. The priests held the highest positions and authority of leadership, and they were expected to obey God's commands. But these priests had moral conduct issues, as we read in the passage, and their judgment was way off. They were causing division and injustice among the people. So Malachi warns them. He says this. He says, uphold your responsibilities with integrity. Otherwise, there's going to be curses to your, to, your, to your future generation. And so what we see here, this underscores the idea that, that a lack of integrity not only has consequences on us as a person, but it has consequences to our future generations. And so the best way I could illustrate this, this point was, um, I was in eighth grade, it was a Wednesday, and I didn't want to go to school that day. Um, I go to school, and um, I get there, and there's a substitute teacher. And so I decided that I wanted to be the, the class clown that day. And um, <clears throat> sure enough, I misbehaved really bad. I got all my friends to do bad things, and this substitute teacher, I could tell in his face, he was just frustrated, and he was, he was mad, and that day, I misbehaved so bad. Well, it's, it's Wednesday night, and if you grew up in the Spanish church, we have church every night in Spanish, amen? <laughs> it was Wednesday night, and there was going to be a big service Wednesday night, and guess who's the musician? I'm in charge of all the musicians, and I get there, and we start this worship we start rehearsing, and I'm, I'm gathering the team after having a bad day in school. I'm getting, hey, guys, this is, this is going to be a great service, and I'm getting my team ready. Worship starts. I'm on the piano. Next thing you know, I look, and through the doors, walking in, guess who it was? The substitute teacher is walking in. <laughs> substitute, the substitute teacher walks in, and 
Sure enough, I, in my mind, I said, okay, as soon as worship is done, I'm going to the back. I'm hiding. I'm not going to see this guy. Well, it turns out he starts getting closer and closer and closer to the front. And he stands next to my youth pastor and the pastor. And he sees me. And the guy was shaken up because I gave that guy a hard time that day. And I could tell he's shaken up. Sure enough, he leans in. He goes like this, mentions something. And right there I knew during the worship session, I said, man, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I got, I got exposed. Well, it turns out that he wasn't just my substitute teacher, but he was the guest speaker for the night. He was the guest speaker for the night. And I never forget uh, my youth pastor at the end of the service, and I'm going to speak more about him later. He just asked me one question. He said, hey, Joel, how was school today? I said, I already knew that I was exposed. I was already in trouble. And he said this about integrity. He told me this. He says, Joel, integrity means doing the right thing, even when no one is watching. It's about being honest, truthful, and sticking to your values and principles, even when it's challenging or tempting to do otherwise. So what is the call for this problem? What is God calling us to? Very simple, to have integrity. God, God is calling us to have integrity. God desires integrity in our lives. When you have integrity, you'll be shining a light in your world, your job, your school, and your community, and reflecting God's goodness. And here's the promise. It's in Proverbs. He says this, and when Proverbs says this, whoever walks in integrity walks securely, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. You want to live a secure life? Walk in integrity. The third problem is this, is that these priests were leading others astray. For the lips of a priest, as Malachi, ought to preserve knowledge because he is the messenger of the Lord Almighty. The priest had strayed away of God's ways and had influenced others to do the same, kind of like what I was doing that day at school. <laughs> the passage highlights the need for leaders to lead by example. See, priests in ancient Israel, they were expected to uphold the moral and ethical standards of God's covenant and demonstrate loyalty and righteousness. And I was trying to imagine, how can I illustrate this point? And I came across this video. I think it's funny. I think it was part of a Super Bowl ad a, um, a couple of years ago. And I'm just going to share with you. It's 30 seconds. Check out, check out what I believe a, how a leader leads others astray. Check this out. Hey, guys. guys. Just thought you might want to know. Uh, sales aren't up. They're, uh, they're down. Ooh. I love how the monkey, who is the leader, the guy in the suit, he tells him, hey, start dancing, come join the party. That's amazing. And so um, that's what, that's, I mean, talk about leading your people astray, right? Sales are down, but they, they're still celebrating and partying. And so what is the call? What is God call, calling us to? I believe is this, God is calling us to, to have godly leadership. Malachi talks about the role of a priest as spiritual leaders. And as godly leaders, we are expected to lead by example, showing others what it means to follow God and live a life that honors him. As godly leaders, we are expected to be faithful messengers of God, of God's truth, and to guide people in his ways. We should strive to set an example for our peers. Godly leadership is a sacred responsibility, whether you're a mentor, whether you're a parent, whether you're a student, whether you're a friend, whether you're a brother. We should strive to be messengers of God's truth and love. When we learn how to trust in the Lord and lead his way, not by our strength, this is what he promises. This is the promise. It's in Proverbs. You guys, heard this, you guys have heard this passage before. He says this. It says this, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding in all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. God wants us to trust him and follow his principles for leadership, and he will make our path, our path straight. Amen? The fourth problem that we see here in this passage, and we're almost done. Hopefully, yeah, I'm going to hit my 20-minute mark, right, Micah? I don't know. Am I going too fast? <laughs> the fourth problem is this, is that there's a lack of respect 
When I think about the problem, I'm remembered of the story of Daniel. And um, from time to time, I, I watch super books with my, with my kids. Have you guys ever seen super books? Yeah, there you go. Well, super books is this animated show for kids. And if you want to learn about the Bible, watch super books. I mean, it's just incredible. These stories come to life. It's animated. It's a show. And I always learn something when I watch super books. But I was reminded of the story of Daniel. And Daniel was a young man. If you guys don't know about the story of Daniel in the Bible, he was a young man of strong faith, and he's taken into captivity to Babylon along with other Israelites. And despite the challenges of being in a foreign land with different customs and beliefs, Daniel remains steadfast in his devotion to God. He refuses to compromise his faith, and throughout his life in Babylon, Daniel continued to honor God through prayer through interpretation of dreams and wise counsel to the rulers. See, his unwavering respect for God and adherence to his principles led to his promotion and influence in the foreign kingdom. Despite facing opposition and threats, Daniel maintains his respect and trust for God. Actually, in the book of Daniel, I love this passage where it says this. It says, Then the king gave Daniel high honors and many great gifts, And made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief prefect over all the wise men in Babylon. Daniel honored God in the midst of that crazy, that crazy world that he was living in. So what is the call for this one? For lack of respect, I believe God is calling us to honor, honor him. Let's move from lack of respect to honor. Let us resolve to live in a manner that brings honor to him. Honoring God involves aligning your life with his moral principles, living a life of integrity, honesty, kindness, and love for others in a way that honors him in everything that we do. We need to learn how to take delight in honoring God in everything that we do. And here's the promise. In Psalms, take the light in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. God loves us. He's going to give us the desires of our heart. We just got to honor him. The fifth problem that we see here in the passage is this, and I'm almost done, is that there's a failure to teach God's truth. This emphasizes the importance of preserving and conveying God's truth accurately without distortion or compromise. And in our world where information is distorted, so so distorted, the principles from Malachi serve as a reminder of the ethical and moral responsibilities that come with teaching truth. And I'm so grateful for the people God has placed in my life. Um, Actually, my parents are here. I, wanna, I, wanna, I want them to stand. My mom and dad, they're sitting there in the back. If you don't mind standing, this is my, my mom and dad. My mom and dad, uh, they, they taught me the word of God, the truth of the word of God since I was a little boy. Never failed. And I'm, I'm here today because of that, because since I was, I was born, my, my parents taught me the word of God. They taught me how to love God. And one of the things I love about my dad is that um, one, one of the things I love about my dad is that my dad finds greatness in every little thing. We could be walking together as a family. Next thing you know, he stops. I see dirt. He sees an ant pile. And he kneels down, Joe, oh, look at this. Check out the ants. Look at how amazing God is working through these ants. Look at the wisdom that the Lord gave these ants and how they're, how they're protecting the queen and how they work. And, and he, see, he just finds greatness in things that for us, for me, sometimes I'm like, Dad, what? I, I see dirt, but he, he sees God's greatness. And I look to the side. In fact, there's a visual of this. I have a visual of this. And, oh, and by the way, now he's teaching my kids. That's him with, with, with my three boys. And now, 
I see a, a weed on, 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 on the grass and, he's, and, and he sees a flower. This was just the other day. <laughs> look, look, Joel, check this out. Look at how amazing God is. And dad, I just want to tell you that the greatest inheritance, mom, you could ever leave me and my children is that you taught us the word of God. You taught us the truth of the word of God. And now my children, in fact, the other day, I don't like lizards, I don't like insects. <laughs> sure enough, there was a little lizard that came in through my door. And I told my son, son, I told Ezra, Ezra, grab that lizard. He's trying to grab it. It gets my way. I go like this. I, ac- I mean, I was trying to save his life. I accidentally killed the lizard. What was that for? My kids, all my kids were so mad. They were crying hysterically. I mean, crying. They said, Dad, how dare you? That lizard has a purpose. <laughs> you took away his purpose. And they were so mad. So now we have a campaign in our house that says, Lizards live. <laughs> And so, yeah, it's just incredible, Dad. You taught us that. My, and my mom, forget it, doesn't stay behind. My mom could tell me something, and I think I know better. And sure enough, she was right. And she just gives me this look. look. She says, I told you. <laughs> Mom's no best. The other, the other leader that taught me truth, and here's a picture of him too. That's my youth pastor who taught me about integrity right there. That's me as a young boy. That, that was probably a probably about the age that I got uh, exposed by the substitute teacher. (laughs) Um, And that's Sammy. Sammy's not here anymore. Sammy actually went to be with the Lord during COVID. And um, he's, he's greatly missed. But Sammy, what I love about Sammy is that he was a leader. God put in my life at a young age. He saw the gift that I had. I knew three or four chords on the piano. And he positioned me. And he said, son, you got, a, you got a gift. And right away, he, he, he poured into me. And because of Sammy, I'm, I'm here today. Because of Sammy, we get to do this ministry. We get to pour into others. We get to do what we're doing with Unified Sound. And not just me, so many, so many others, including my wife, Sammy's leadership, made a huge inf- influence on us. He taught us truth. He taught us truth. And not only that, what I love about Sammy, he would always reference this scripture. In Proverbs, he would say, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. And Sammy would use that scripture not only to talk about staying, you know, training us up in the word, but also training up a child in their passion and in their purpose. He would say, you got to train up the student. If they have a calling to be a musician, we got we to tra- train them up in that area so they could, they could continue. And, and they're not going to, apart from the things of God, if, if, we, if they learn how to discover their, their passion. And I, and I don't know who this is for today, but I encourage you, start looking into the next generation and start developing the next generation because there's impact for you leaders and for you older folks in the room. And what is the promise? Well, actually, what is the call? The call is this. The call, God is t- calling us to teach truth. It's our responsibility to teach God's truth. And the promise is this. The promise is actually right there in, in Malachi. Malachi said this. My covenant was with him, a covenant of life and peace. Covenant of life and peace. So to conclude, if I was to, to wrap up my whole message today into one word is this. I believe God is calling us to be light. God is calling us to be light. Here's the big reveal if you didn't catch it. You ready for this? Here it goes. God is calling us to love God, to have integrity, to have godly leadership, to honor God, and to teach truth. He's calling us to be light in this world. In fact, Jesus was preaching a message, and he said this in Matthew, and I'm, I'm almost concluding, Mike. I think I hit my time, hopefully. He said this in Matthew. He said this, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, 
and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Those were the words of Jesus. So church family, as we approach the holiday season, the holidays are coming, let us remember the light of the world that entered into our lives when darkness prevailed. Just envision the impact we could have as a community if we come together as a unified church, or a unified body, and we truly embrace these principles. We would become beacons of light in a very dark world. Let us commit to this mission, helping people draw near to God by being a light in our world. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for your word today. We are thankful that you sent your son Jesus, Lord, into this world to save us, and you sent your Holy Spirit to be our guide. And we're thankful that your son Jesus was perfect in all these ways, Lord, because of our relationship with him. We're not dependent on us having to be perfect, Lord. But Lord, we ask you, we ask you to help us be like God. Help us live a life that's honoring to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.